Okay, so right back where we were, we've got our floor, we've got our cube, we've got them textured. Uh, let's take a look at cameras. Right now, we've got this main camera in our scene. Um, so if we hit the play button up here at the top, you'll see it takes us to the game area, and we're basically looking, playing the game right now. Uh, but this main camera doesn't move unless you apply a script to it to tell it to move. Uh, so right now it's just kind of uh, a basic still shot of what's going on in the game, which is great if you want to test out like an animation or just see how something's going to look based on textures and lighting. Um, but it doesn't offer you a whole lot of interactivity. So let's go ahead up here and click on the play button again. And it takes us out of that play scene and back to our regular scene here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a player. And we're going to use the basic uh, first person controller that um, is part of the Unity package. So we want to include the package first. So in the assets, you want to go back to the main assets folder. You could click on it over here if you need to. And go ahead and right click in the project window go to import package and then go down to characters. It's going to ask you and it's going to take a couple minutes possibly for this to all come in because there's a lot here but if you go you see this import unity package window that comes up make sure it's all selected. I'll go ahead and just select everything and you could just hit the all all button and uh, let's hit import and you'll see the um, progress bar um, showing you how it's importing. If you know exactly what you want, you could just isolate those things by checking them. It'd be quicker. Um, but uh, for now, we'll just go ahead and import the entire character package. All right. So there we've got um, our our character package selected or imported. And you can see what it did is it created a standard assets folder. And if you go inside that, then you'll find characters. So let's go into the character folder and we want the first person controller and this is going to be a prefab which just basically means it's a model with scripts and other things attached to it and it's an, going to create an instance of that. So we'll go into the prefabs folder and you'll see FPS controllers. Let's go ahead and click and you can drag that either into the scene or into the hierarchy. It doesn't matter. Once you've done that, you'll see it comes in here in the center at the zero axis. So I'm going to hit F to zoom in on it and rotate around it so I can see. Now you'll also notice it came in half in the floor. So we want to make sure we move it so it's just above the floor line or right on it. You don't want to, if it's penetrating the floor line at all, it won't recognize the uh, collision detection. Um, or the box collider that's on the floor and your character will end up just falling into um, into infinity. So you'll notice here the object or the player is roughly two units tall um, which is roughly six feet. It is a basically a pill shaped cylinder and it has a camera attached at the top so you're looking out of the eye view. It has a speaker on it which means it has a source audio so it's providing sound that would be for things like the footsteps and things. You also see this blue circle around it that is the first audio uh, cutoff point for the near audio and then you also notice way off in the distance there's another kind of circle that's surrounding it. That's how far the audio will go out. Um, now, let's go ahead and play this. And a few things will happen here, but let's go ahead and hit play. And you can see that it puts me into the FPS controller. So I can use my mouse to, to look around. And I can use the WASD keys on the keyboard to, to walk and move. Um, and you can hit spacebar to jump if you want to jump over an object or whatever. So this is your basic first person controller. Now if I close this, uh, if you want to get out of this, hit escape. That gives your mouse back. And you go up here to click on the play button to 
turn it off. You also see down here at the bottom of the window it says there are two audio listeners in the scene. Please ensure there's always exactly one audio listener in the scene. So uh, basically what that means is if we click on the FPS controller, click on the first person character and go over into um, the inspector here, you'll see there's an audio listener. Um, if I select the FPS controller at the top level, you scroll down, you'll see there's an audio source. The speaker symbol is the audio source. This is any audio that you apply to this that you want to hear. But in order to hear it, you have to have an, an audio listener, and the listener is attached to the camera. And um, since we have two, because there's one on this camera, this main camera as well, we could either uncheck the audio listener on the main camera, or we could right click on it and say remove the component altogether. So now if we play the game, you'll see at the bottom of the screen there's no more warnings there there are no more warnings about having two listeners so it's important that you only have one listener if you if you think it's going to be a temporary thing just turn the listener off in one of the cameras or delete the component or just delete the camera altogether if you don't need it okay so let's play around with this a little bit more i'm going to go back into the play mode and let's see if we can you know now that i have this one audio listener, I can hear the footsteps as I'm walking around. And these are just audio clips that have already been um, imported into the FPS controller. And you can, su you can uh, substitute those with other ones. If you find a, a, a better sound effect or whatever, you can put it in there yourself. I'm going to walk straight at this box. And you can see that it stops. So it tells me the box has a collision detection system on it. And, um, and and that's good. So we'd have to jump over it to go around it or go around it, whichever works. Um, and you can make this um, yourself. I'm going to hit Escape, close out. But let's go ahead and click on that box. And you'll see in the inspector here, it has a box collider assigned to it. So if I turn that box collider off, and now I play the game, you'll see here that we can walk we line it up, we can walk straight through the box. So now it no longer recognizes that there is a collision there until we go back to the inspector and turn the box collider on. We can now play the game again and see that we can no longer just walk through the box. All right, so that's the box colliders. That's how that that sort of thing works. Now, there are other things that we can do here. It's real time. So we can apply what's called a rigid body to this object and make it actually move as if it's an object being um, moved with some type of force pushed against it. So that's where our add components comes into play here. So I'll select the box, go down here to add component, and we're going to choose a physics component, so click on physics, and I'm going to choose rigid body. Now what this rigid body does is it makes this object work as if it's a real world object. So it has weight, it has drag, it has mass. Um, you can see here the mass is automatically set to 1, the drag is set to 0. It says use gravity, which we want, so it doesn't float off. And uh, we'll just leave it at this, those actual um, settings and let's see what happens. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to my game scene and I'm going to drag that window off and put it down here on the bottom. And that way I can see what's going on in the game as I'm playing it and I can see what's going on up here just based on where my my view is. So let's go ahead and hit the play button. And I'm going to play down here in this window. You can see in my view, there goes my first person player running past the, uh, the scene. And I'm going to line myself up. I'm going to go ahead and run right into this box and see what happens. Boom. So you see in up, up in the uh, scene view, you can see when I hit the box, it actually moves the box a little bit. That's because we have the rigid body. Now it's no longer just a stagnant object. Now it's actually something that could 
move along um, along like a real object. Let's do another thing here. I'm going to hit end. I'm going to move this box up into the air. And let's see what happens when we hit the play. There it goes. So we see it fall down hit the ground because we have the use gravity uh, option applied to that. So you can apply, you can play around with the mass and the drag and and things to see how those things um, can affect that particular type of object.